Hi folks, this is College Algebra, Checkpoint Quiz 7.5. Alright, number one, we're given an equation, asked to put it in standard form. And we are asked to find center, vertices, foci, and asymptotes. So if this didn't clue you in that it was a hyperbola, how could we have looked at the equation to see that it was hyperbola? Well, both variables are squared. And they have different signs. This is a positive, this is a negative. So unless it turns out to be one of those degenerate conics, it's going to be a hyperbola. So we've got 25x squared minus 50x minus 4y squared minus 16y minus 91 all equal to 0. And we have to fit it in one of the two hyperbola forms, either an x squared minus y squared form or a y squared minus x squared form. And even though the x squared here is positive at the beginning, that may not be the case that when we're all done with it, the x squared is still positive. But nevertheless, we can go ahead and think the x squared will be positive, and if we have to change it, we have to change it. This will at least remind us what we need to do to get it in standard form. The first thing I'm going to have to do is complete squares. And since the coefficient of the x squared and y squared are different, um, we're going to factor out the x squared and the y squared. Might as well move that 91 over to the other side to get it out of the way. The way we can do that is add it to both sides. All right, let's factor out what's multiplying the x squared from both of the x terms. I would have an x squared minus 2x. And I'm going to leave room for the perfect square I'm going to put in there. Uh, factor out the negative 4 from the y squared and the 16y. And once again, I'm going to leave room for the completed square. So I'm going to have 25 times take half of this, x minus 1, quantity squared, square it, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times, take half of this, it's 2, square it, you get 4, equals, and now I have to determine what to add to the other side to keep the balance. Well, I added 1 inside the quantity, but what did I really add to this side? 25 times 1, so I have to add a 25 over here to keep the balance. What did I really add here? Well, I added 4 inside the quantity, but when I multiply through the negative 4, I'm really adding a negative 16 to that side. So I get 91 plus 25 minus 16, which equals 100. So now I've got the perfect squares. Now I've got to get the thing equal to 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by the 100. Once again, I'll divide term by term. I take the first term divided by 100. I get x minus 1 squared over 4 minus the y plus 2 squared over 4 over 100 is 25, and that's all equal to 1. So now I've got this thing in standard form. All right, so here it is in standard form. I can quickly read off the center in the same way I'd read off the center of a circle or an ellipse. It's 1 comma negative 2. I'm going to go over 1 comma negative 2. There's the center. How far do I move in the x direction? I look at this number. The square root of 4 is 2. I'm moving 2 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. How far up and down do I move? The square root of 25 is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then down 5. 1, 
two, three, four, five. And I'm going to create my box. I'm going to dot in the rectangles there. That's determined by those. Now I'm going to dot in the asymptotes. The, abs the asymptotes go through the center as well as the diagonals of the box. Um, so here I go. I'm going to try to do this as best as I can. Those are supposed to be straight lines. Okay, so uh, that looks pretty terrible, but there are supposed to be lines there. Those are slant asymptotes. And now I go back and look. Since it's the x squared, which is first, it's x squared minus y squared, I know the parabola opens left and right. going to sneak in there. Alright, so it's a pretty sorry looking hyperbola, but um, there it is. Okay, so uh, on to find other things. What are the vertices? Well, by definition, the vertices of the hyperbola are the points on the hyperbola which lie along the transverse axis. What's the transverse axis for this hyperbola? Well, it's the, in this case, it's the line that goes to the center um, which intersects the hyperbola. So in this case, the transverse axis is this horizontal, is uh, parallel to this, hor is, excuse me, lies on this horizontal line. And I can get these two endpoints were two of the original points that I drew. So the center we know was at 1, negative 2, and I moved two units left and right. That's going to put the vertices at 3, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 2, because I moved two units left and right of the center. What about the foci? Well, just like with the ellipses, the C is the key. And to find C, we add the squares in the case of the hyperbola. So I get square root 29, which is a little bigger than square root 25, so it's a little more than 5. So I move out 5 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to get to the foci. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to get to the foci. And once again, this number C represents the distance from the center to each focus. So if I start at the uh, center, 1, negative 2, and move radical 29 units to the right, I'm going to add radical 29 to the x-coordinate. And if I start at the center and move to the left, radical 29 units, I'm going to subtract radical 29 the last thing we need to get are the asymptotes. And what do we know about the asymptotes? The asymptotes go through the center as well as the corners of the box. And there's two of them. Y equals plus or minus. The slope, how far up did I go? The square root of 5, which is 5. How far over did I go? The square root of 4, which is 2. So the y, asymptotes are Y equals plus or minus. 5 halves, x minus the x-coordinate of the center, 1, plus the y-coordinate of the center, negative 2. So we get two of them. If I look at the positive 5 halves, positive 5 halves x, I get a minus 5 halves, minus 2, that would be a minus 5 halves, minus 4 halves or minus 9 halves for the first asymptote. The other asymptote would have the slope negative 5 halves, x. The negative 5 halves would contribute or, or would multiply to give me a plus 5 halves, 5 halves minus 2, 5 halves minus 4 halves, give me a positive 1 half. Alright, so those are the two slant asymptotes. So that'll do it for number one.